This video will cover subtopic 6.5, neurons and synapses. Here are a list of uh, understandings, applications, and skills that will be covered in this video. So when we talk about uh, neurons and, uh, and synapses, we're really talking about uh, what is called an electrochemical impulse. So we'll first start out by considering the structure of a neuron and uh, what they do. So neurons basically operate on the passing of an electrical signal along the cell. So they take an electrical signal, they pass it along. So this type of electrical signal or current is called a nerve impulse, or sometimes it can be called uh, an action potential. Nerve impulse, action potential, same thing. So neurons that are not transmitting nerve impulses are called resting neurons, although they are not resting, they're very active cells. So if we look at the structure of a, of a neuron, which is shown in the diagram here, we can see a number of specialized features within uh, this particular cell type. So um, we'll start with the cell body. This is kind of where you'd find the nucleus, and this is basically kind of like the support center for the, for the cell. This is where everything um, that the cell needs will get uh, produced. You have these extensions coming off of the cell body called the dendrites, these dendrites will receive messages from other cells, from other neurons. And we'll see in the next slide how um, these dendrites connect to other neurons. Now there is an elongated structure coming off of the cell body, which is longer than the dendrite. And there is only one of these structures, uh, which is called an axon. So an axon, the structure of the, or the function of the axon, sorry, is um, to pass the message um, on and allows for that uh, a nerve impulse uh, to travel and then um, move on towards uh, adjacent cells. So that nerve impulse is going to travel down that axon and then eventually there is a terminal point which is called the terminal branches of the axon and these terminal branches will form junctions with other cells so they will connect or um, uh, be in close proximity to other cells that will receive that nerve impulse. Now oftentimes um, there is a special structure covering the axon referred to as the myelin sheath. Um, this will help uh, speed uh, these nerve impulses along uh, the axon. So this is the basic structure um, of, of a neuron. And what we'll have a look at in this video is how a nerve impulse um, is, is generated um, and how that nerve impulse travels along the axon. So considering, we'll, we'll consider then how neurons are structured and organized as well to kind of give a bit of context in terms of how uh, a nerve impulse um, um, can be generated, uh, how it travels, and kind of the purpose of it. So if there's some kind of stimulus event on a, on a nerve cell, um, this can be through pressure or touch or sound, let's say, um, this can trigger that nerve impulse. That nerve impulse travels down the axon, and then when it reaches the terminal branches, and this is a magnified view of those terminal branches, the nerve impulse um, or information about the nerve impulse is... Uh, sent or uh, communicated to that adjacent cell. So in this case, the terminal branches are making contact um, with uh, the, the, the dendrites on um, that adjacent cell. This will trigger a nerve impulse in this particular cell and uh, continue that nerve impulse or allow that nerve impulse to continue down that axon, sending or relaying that uh, information uh, contained in that nerve impulse. So um, the nerve fibers that we will consider are referred to as being myelinated nerve fibers. Now, myelin is um, a special structure that coats the length of nerve cells. And what myelin is, is basically um, layers of phospholipids that are specialized cells referred to as Schwann cells. They are basically like very, very flat cells that wrap themselves uh, around uh, the axon. <clears throat> Now, um, myelin's, uh, the myelin sheath, um, 
basically will have uh, gaps uh, between each myelin uh, sheath. These gaps between the myelin sheath um, are referred to as the nodes or a node of Ranvier. Um, in myelinated nerves, uh, what this will allow um, is basically that nerve impulse to jump uh, from one gap to another. So rather than a nerve impulse traveling down the entire length of an axon, which can take a bit of time, basically you'll get, um, you'll get a nerve impulse um, that occurs in one area and then the signal will basically jump uh, to another area down the, the node, you'll get um, a nerve impulse there, and then it basically kind of keeps traveling down, jumping all the way down the axon. So that's a lot quicker than just traveling straight down the axon. If you, if you can get that signal to kind of jump or leap um, as it goes along, that can allow it to travel much faster. So this type of conduction is known as saltatory conduction. And most vertebrate motor neuron, um, motor axons operate in this manner. So like I said, the nerve impulse is much quicker in myelinated nerves as compared to unmyelinated nerves. So when a, when a neuron is not actively uh, transmitting a signal, um, they are resting. So uh, a neuron that is not transmitting uh, a signal has a potential difference across its membrane. And that potential difference is called a uh, resting difference. So that potential difference basically means that there is a charge difference across the neuron of um, uh, across the the neuron uh, sorry across the cell membrane of a neuron. So in this diagram here, we'll ignore all this kind of fancy equipment, um, but we can think of this blue area here as the plasma membrane. Um, so this is the cell membrane of that neuron. <clears throat> here you have uh, the extracellular area. Here is inside the cell. And there is a potential difference um, because the outside of the cell is going to have a greater positive charge um, on the outside, um, creating basically a negative charge on, on the inside of, of the cell. So there are more positive charges outside the cell than inside the cell. This creates a charge difference across the cell membrane. And this creates that potential difference. Now, if you take a voltmeter and a very specialized voltmeter, um, you place one electrode on top of the um, cell membrane, and then you place one e electrode into the cytosol, so through the plasma membrane into the cytosol of that cell, you can actually measure that electrical difference. And um, neurons at rest have a resting potential of about minus 70 millivolts. So um, you can actually measure that uh, voltage uh, across that uh, plasma membrane. So um, when, um, when a nerve impulse occurs, the transmission of that impulse is going to take place in four stages. There is um, the initiation stage, so a neuron is stimulated when pressure, chemical activity, or some type of stimulus is applied at some site on the neuron membrane, usually around uh, the cell body area. This will alter the shape of proteins in the membrane, and then you have sodium ions that are flooded into the cell, through these passive channels, uh, changing the electrochemical gradient um, and the membrane will become depolarized. The stimulus uh, um, will raise the voltage around the membrane to what is called the threshold potential, at which point the sensitive uh, sodium channels will open up. The inside of the membrane develops a positive charge relative to the outside, so the polarity of the membrane will reverse. We'll have a look at that in an illustration on the next slide. So this depolarization will cause the passive channels to close so that no more sodium ions can enter the cell. The sodium ions are then pumped back out of the cell membrane and this will reestablish the original uh, concentration difference. So basically, um, if this is our uh, uh, neuron membrane here, um, there is a, a situation here where the sodium potassium ion pump, which was discussed um, in unit one, this is where the sodium potassium ion pump comes into play, is, is operating. So this sodium potassium ion pump is going to work to pump sodium ions 
um, to the outside of, of the cell, and at the same time, it's bringing uh, potassium ions to the inside of the cell. Now, um, for every three uh, sodium ions it pumps out, um, it brings in two potassium ions. So this will create um, that uh, potential difference now, creating that positive charge on the outside of, of the cell and creating a negative charge on the inside of, of the cell. As well as there are these negatively charged proteins which help contribute to the overall negative charge within the cytoplasm of the cell. So during the initiation events, there are these um, sodium channels that are normally closed. Um, these sodium channels will open up. And because there is a high concentration of sodium ions on the outside of the cell, and a low concentration of sodium ions on the inside of the cell, these sodium ions that are outside of the cell will rush into the cytoplasm of, uh, of the neuron on that axon, um, and the sodium ions will move from a high concentration gradient to a low concentration gradient. All these sodium ions moving into the cytosol um, from the extracellular environment now um, causes a excess buildup of positive charge on the inside of the cell. And so you'll get a reversal of the charge on the membrane where um, the inside of the cell will become positively charged and the outside now will become uh, negatively charged. This is what's referred to as um, depolarization. So looking at how all this plays out um, on, uh, on, on the axon um, of the neuron. So here we have a portion of the axon that is magnified. The purple area is the cell membrane. The circles represent um, the sodium channels. And um, we have that uh, resting potential where we have that uh, buildup of positive charge on the outside of the cell, the buildup of negative charge on the inside of the cell. At the beginning of a nerve impulse or an action potential, these sodium channels, a few of these sodium channels will open up and you'll have sodium channels flowing um, in through the, the cell membrane. This will cause depolarization um, in this area um, of, of the cell membrane where the charge will become negative on the outside and positive on the inside. Now, um, this uh, depolarization will also trigger adjacent sodium channels to open up. So the sodium channels that are close to the ones that have been depolarized will open up. You'll get another flood of sodium, channel, sodium ions moving in. Um, and while um, sodium ions are moving in, um, the potassium ions that are on the inside of the cell, those will start to move out of the cell as these voltage-gated potassium ion channels will open up, allowing them to move from a high concentration on the inside of the cell to um, a low concentration on the outside of the cell. So they will rapidly move out. And this will cause a repolarization of that cell membrane where it was positive, um, it was negative when the sodium ions moved in, the movement of potassium ions uh, um, outside, um, moving uh, to the outside of the cell, will cause that uh, membrane to become positively charged again. So you'll get a repolarization. So this is all summed up on this particular slide here. We'll just kind of zoom in a little bit. I'll try that again. Um, so for that transmission along the nerve fiber, as I mentioned, there's two things that you, two terms that you need to keep in mind here as we're talking about this. There is the depolarization, which is a change uh, from uh, negative to positive, depending what you're looking at. Um, and then there's the repolarization, so there's a change back from positive to negative. And so that nerve impulse is going to be transmitted by the depolarization of the neuron due to the opening of the sodium channels. Um, sodium ions will diffuse into the neuron, so the inside is positive relative to the outside. And the momentary depolarization will affect the sodium ion channels immediately beside it. 
they then depolarize in the same way the signal um, spreads down the, the neuron. So those sodium channels um, that are closed but adjacent to the ones that are now open will open up for themselves and you'll get this repeated cycle of events that occur down the axon of, of the neuron. Because the stimulus is received at one end of the neuron, the signal will pass in one direction. So the signal will go from cell body to uh, terminal branches. Now, repolarization will happen rapidly after the depolarization due to the closing of the sodium channels um, and then the opening of the potassium channels. When those potassium channels open up, uh, potassium ions will diffuse out of the neuron, which makes the inside of the cell negative uh, compared to the outside. The time that is required um, then for the sodium uh, potassium ion pumps to restore the original polarity is referred to as the refractory period. So to get back to that original resting threshold of negative 70 millivolts um, is referred to as the refractory period. Now during this time, the membrane cannot be depolarized again, so it will not uh, initiate another nerve impulse. So the self-propagating wave of depolarization, the nerve impulse, is an all-or-nothing affair. The amount of stimulation needed to open enough uh, sodium channels is called the threshold value, so enough stimulus has to be received to open enough channels that will trigger more sodium channels to open up. And so there is a threshold uh, level of stimulation that is needed to trigger um, a nerve impulse. So these nerve impulses are, all, uh, are also referred to as action potentials. Um, action potentials are always going to be the same size, or the nerve impulses are always going to be the same size. Um, and because of the all or nothing nature, um, a single action potential does not convey information about the magnitude of the stimulus that initiated it. So. How can we tell the difference between a light touch and a pinch, or a whisper and a loud bang? This really depends mainly on the number of action potentials transmitted per unit of time, or the frequency of action potentials, and um, um, not really uh, their size. So their size is going to be the same, but it's the number of them that uh, gets sent per unit time. So this picture here looks at um, the repolarization side of uh, a nerve impulse or an action potential. So now we've had sodium ions that have moved into the inside of the membrane. So sodium ions are now high on the inside um, so that while being low on the outside. So this has caused a situation where it's now um, going to be positively charged on the inside of the cell. Um, and the outside of the cell is going to be uh, relatively negatively charged. This will cause the sodium channels to open up, and sodium channels will then flow from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell, um, repolarizing the cell to its original charge, where it's going to be positive on the outside, and um, negative, it was supposed to be negative signs, um, negative on the inside of the cell. So this picture also just kind of summarizes um, what happens during a nerve impulse or um, uh, 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 an action potential. So if we start here with the resting potential, this is a nerve cell at rest. This green line that I'm going to draw is the cell uh, membrane. So we have the outer space, we have the inside of the cell. Outside of the cell, we have a whole bunch of sodium ions. On the inside of the cell, we have a whole bunch of potassium ions. So we have our negative, uh, our sorry, our positive charge on the outside of the cell, our negative charge on the inside of the cell. Now, at, as some as an action potential is triggered, you have these sodium channels which will open up. Sodium channels uh, will allow all these sodium ions to move to the inside of the cell. So sodium ions are going to move from a high concentration to a low concentration because we have all this positive charge on the inside of the cell now. The inside of the cell will depolarize and become positively charged, where the outside will become negatively charged. Shortly after the sodium channels open up, potassium channels uh, will open up, 
allowing potassium ions to move from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell. So they will move from a high concentration to a low concentration. This will cause repolarization of the cell membrane, where the outside will go back to being positively charged, the inside will go back to being negatively charged. Um, and then to get back to that resting potential, because um, there is what's called an uh, undershoot, where um, the cell will become uh, more negatively charged than it needs to, so it needs to get back to a resting potential of minus 70 uh, millivolts. The concentration gradients of each ion will also need to be reestablished, and this is done with the sodium ion, um, uh, sodium uh, potassium ion um, pump. So this pump will take three sodiums, move it from the inside of the cell to the outside, and will take two potassium ions um, and move it from the outside to the inside. And during this process, um, we'll use ATP um, to, to do this. So this uh, sodium potassium ion pump will create that concentration gradient of high sodium on the outside of the cell and high potassium on the inside of the cell. So this picture has, uh, you know, illustrates what happens during an action potential in terms of that action potential moving down the axon. So an action potential is generated as sodium ions flow inward um, across the membrane at one location, so you have all those sodium ions moving in. Um, and then the depolarization um, of the action potential will spread uh, to neighboring regions of the membrane. So the action potential here will cause depolarization in adjacent um, uh, sodium uh, um, uh, channels um, in the membrane. So this will then um, allow that uh, action potential to move down that membrane. Um, and then in an area where an action potential has just happened, you'll get the repolarization occurring where potassium ions move out of the cell. And then the depolarization repolarization process is repeated in the next region of the membrane. In this way, um, local currents of ions um, uh, across the plasma membrane cause the action potential to be propagated along the length of the axon. So you'll have the action potential just kind of moving down the uh, axon until it reaches the terminal branches. Now with action potentials or nerve impulses or spikes, these, these initiate in the axons and neurons and in the dendrites of certain sensory cells. The nerve impulse is a combination of self-propagating chemical and electrical events. So simply stated, a nerve impulse is established once the resting potential uh, voltage is altered or depolarized creating an electrical current that travels across uh, the neural membrane. And so that action potential can actually be traced using uh, what's called an oscilloscope trace, or we could just call it a graph of an action potential. So this slide shows you here um, what an action potential actually looks like. So if we look at uh, just kind of the general shape of um, uh, the oscilloscope trace or the graph of that action potential. So here we have the membrane potential. Um, we have the time occurring. So um, the neuron here is basically at rest um, or at that resting potential of minus 70 millivolts. At some point here, um, you're going to get a stimulus that is applied. That stimulus is enough to pass that threshold And so once that threshold uh, potential has been reached, you'll get a full depolarization of the cell. So this is where sodium channels are completely opening up. Um, and you're getting a complete depolarization. So that depolarization results in that um, positive um, resting potential. And then at some point, those sodium channels are going to close. And then you're going to get uh, potassium channels opening up resulting in that repolarization. Um, and then that repolarization will result in what's called that undershoot, where it goes beyond that um, minus 70 millivolt resting potential. And then the cell has to be able to return to that minus 70 millivolts 
um, resting potential before another action potential can be triggered. So during this time, during the undershoot, no additional action potentials can be triggered. And this is a period where the sodium potassium ion pumps are working hard to reestablish those uh, concentration gradients of high concentrations of sodium outside of the cell, high concentrations of potassium inside the cell. So looking at that action potential now in relation to what's going on in the cell, let's move this guy out of the way a little bit. Um, if we start here at the resting state, so this is where the sodium channels, the potassium channels are, are closed. And um, basically you have the sodium uh, ion, uh, sodium potassium ion pump uh, working um, to kind of maintain those high concentration gradients of sodium and potassium. And then this is where the outside of the cell is uh, positively charged and the inside of the cell is going to have that negative charge. Now there is some stimulation event that will trigger depolarization. Um, so with that uh, initial depolarization event, so you get a stimulus that opens some sodium channels, um, you get sodium ions flowing in through those channels which will depolarize the membrane. If the depolarization reaches the threshold, it will trigger that action potential. So this is the action potential being triggered. And so during that rising phase of the action potential, depolarization opens most sodium channels while the potassium channels remain closed. The sodium ion influx makes the inside of the membrane uh, positive with respect to the outside. So here is that uh, depolarization that occurs. So the outside is now uh, uh, negatively charged, the inside is now positively charged. Then, um, as the sodium ions become inactivated, um, most uh, potassium or sodium channels will open up, allowing um, sodium uh, ions, uh, sorry, potassium ions to flow outwards, which makes the inside of the cell negative again. So this is the repolarization part of the action potential. So here you can see the membrane has gone back to being positive on the outside while the inside is negative again. And then there is the last part, which is the undershoot. So during the undershoot, the sodium channels close, but some potassium channels are still open. Um, as these uh, potassium channels close and the sodium channels become unblocked, those still close, um, the membrane will return to its resting state. So um, during this undershoot, you don't get uh, another action potential that occurs until that resting potential is reached again. So um, the cell will work to reestablish those concentration gradients um, where sodium uh, ions are high on the outside of the cell and potassium ions are high on the inside of the cell. So that does it for this video, um, for this part of uh, neurons and synapses.